we have either CT or we have multiple sequences in MR. As you can see with MR, we have multiple sequences which will depict the different stages of the pathophysiology. Whereas with CT, it is a little tough because we have only one sequence and appearances on CT depend solely on the density differences. So when you are looking on CT, we should make most of what is available. That is why when you are suspecting a stroke case, it is always better to combine the CT images with CT angiogram images. So when you are looking at the thick sections of the CT, always try to make out the normal grey white matter junction. If you are not able to appreciate the normal grey white matter junction, try to adjust the window settings so that you will be able to appreciate the contrast between the grey matter and white matter in a better way. For example, the loss of grey white matter junction differentiation here is better appreciated by adjusting the window settings. Looking at the thin sections, try to trace the artery that supplies the abnormal area on thin sections because the vascular structures sometimes in thick sections may show hyperdensity because of the partial voluming effect. But when you are looking on the thin sections, if continuous sections are showing hyperdensity in the vessel, that is definitely abnormal. And as I told you, in all stroke cases, it is always better to combine them with the angiogram images. In the angiogram images, you will be able to appreciate the filling defect wherever the thrombus is present. And you trace each of the artery up to the branch level to see the filling defects in the arteries. Once you see the vascular structures, then again adjust the window settings to the parenchymal level. Once you adjust the parenchymal level, you will be able to appreciate the hypodensities in the parenchyma in a much easier fashion compared to the plain images. As you can see, in between these two images, it is much easier to appreciate the hypodensities and loss of grey white matter tension in the post contrast images compared to the plain images. When you appreciate acute infarcts, you should always try to give aspect scoring. What is aspect score? Overall MCA territory is given a 10 point scoring system and the central core structures will have 4 points. One is for the caudate nucleus, one is for the putamen, one for the internal capsule and one for the insular cortex. So apart from the central core structures, the lateral areas will be given 6 points. At the basal ganglia level, you will have 3 and superior to the basal ganglia, you have the other 3. So overall, you have 10 points and depending on the areas of involvement, you need to deduct it from the 10 point scoring. For example, in this case, there is involvement of 5 areas which are marked in the red. That means the aspect scoring will be 10 minus 5, that is 5. If more the number of areas are involved, then the aspect score will become less and it will indicate poor prognosis. If you have a good aspect score, you will have a good prognosis. Just for example, if only one area is involved, then the aspect score will become 10 minus 1, that is 9, which means it is good prognosis. Aspect scoring will bring the uniformity in reporting so that the clinical team can take an informed decision. In the thick sections, always look for the hypodensity and try to adjust the window settings so that it will be easier to appreciate that. Look for the vessels in the thin sections and try to compare them with the opposite vessels. And in the angiogram images, try to trace each artery from the origin to the ending branches, giving the artery in question more attention and beware of the complications that can occur in the infarcts.